So, so scenario is like that. Question is like that. That 15 years of boy presented with the history of severe joint pain and uh, patient has a weakness. Patient has a fever of 101, 101 temperature. On examination, temperature is 101, pulse rate is around 120 per minute, severe joint pain, pain score of 9, right? Score of pain is 9 out of 10. That is a pain score, right? A rest of the examination is essentially normal. No past medical history. Past medical history is negative for this patient. Now, how will you manage this patient? So when this patient comes to you in emergency room, what's your management or how you manage? Uh, tell me one by one. So, number one, we will, uh, first of all, we will uh, see the, um, we'll go with the pain control first, because the patient is severe in severe pain, and we'll start empiric antibiotics right away. Okay, so what exactly you want to do for this patient, tell me. For the pain? Yeah, I mean, you manage this. Yeah. You decide what okay. you want to do, pain or hydration or antibiotic or you want to oxygen, you want to start. So you decide what you want to do. This is scenario. Okay. If you want yes, to sir. ask me this scenario, you can ask me more questions. If you are not uh, happy with the information, you can ask your question. That yeah. will... Sir, I just want to know the, uh, the pulse is 120 per minute. What about the blood pressure? Blood pressure is 110 over 70. 110 over 70. So we'll uh, we'll give IV fluids. Uh, so bolus. first is not the pain. First thing is IV fluid you want to start. Yes, okay, sir. IV fluid. IV fluids. What IV fluid you will start and at what rate you will start. The, okay, this sir, patient's not... weight, is, weight is around 35 kg. Okay, sir. Hmm. So it's going to be um, around 100 ml per kg. Uh, bolus 100 ml per kg bolus 100 ml per kg so he is 35 kg so 3500 would be bolus right mm. so it's going to be yes or uh, wrong yeah so this is too much you, whatever you are saying I am writing no sir then it will be 50 ml per kg so it is 50 is half 1750. What do you mean by bolus? Bolus means what? What do you understand by bolus? Bolus means uh, I'll uh, connect uh, with the normal saline and uh, try to give the fluids uh, in one hour. Push the fluids in one hour. One hour. So bolus means one hour or 30 minutes or 15 minutes or two hours. What's, what, do you, what do you understand by bolus? Well, with the term bolus, um, I, I am not sure, but I think it should be in 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes or half an hour maximum. Fine. So, so write down the points in your homework. Okay, you need sir. to know what is a bolus. Number okay. one, the exact definition of bolus. Number two, you need to know what is the initial fluid management for this patient. Whenever you start fluid to any patients in emergency room, right? Mm -hmm. how, you, how you calculate the fluid how you calculate the fluid, right? Uh, so we have uh, done the calculation of the fluid for um, dehydration in uh, beads. So that is the reason why I was saying, first of all, I said uh, uh, for the severe dehydration. You're welcome. With, uh, with 100 ml per kg. That's why I said 100 ml. And then because it was too much, 3500 ml. In a bolus, so I thought maybe it's 50 ml per kg. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So, so first of all, the homework is uh, what is bolus? Iram, good afternoon. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. We just started. Uh, nothing missed. Don't worry. So, oh. I'll come to you. So, okay. So, one thing is bolus. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, another thing. So, finally, what you will give? 50 ml per kg? Mm, yes, sir. Fine. So you write down this is second. How you start the IV fluid management in a generalized, generally stable patients, right? Okay, fine. So you have started the IV fluid. What else you want to do? 
and in IV fluid, do you have any choice like normal saline, ringer lactate, dextrose five percent, dextrose twenty five percent? Any choice mm -hmm. in the IV fluid in starting mm -hmm. with this patient? Uh, so it should be normal saline. Why? Well, what happens if you can give D five? What's the problem? Uh, dextrose. Uh, um. Uh, sir. Uh. These all are the practical questions, which is mm -hmm. not written in the book. Yes, sir. Sir, um, in, in diarrhea, in case of diarrhea, we were thinking that if we... But there is no diarrhea. Now. Forget yeah, about diarrhea case. This, diarrhea. Here, yes. there is no diarrhea. We are so talking we can about this case only. Yes, sir. That means we can give dextrose also. You can give. Okay, okay. fine. So, so IV fluid, you started NS. Okay, fine. Next. What else you want to do for this patient? And then IV pain control because the patient is in severe pain. IV pain control means IV medication you want to give for yes, control sir. for control of pain. Yes. What sir. medicine you will give? Sir, IV morphine. IV um, morphine. But, hmm. What dose you will give? The dose is 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 milligram per kg per dose. Morphine, how much? 0 0.1. 2.15 milligram per kg per dose. Right. So let's say 0 0.1 multiply by weight is 35 kg. So he it must be around 3.5 milligram. Am I right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So this 3.5 milligram, how will going to give you to the patient? You sir, you you I, take it from the ampullen directly. You directly IV push the things to the patient. Uh, um, yeah. So we have to, yeah, we can push it in the IV. Well, so so hundred ml. This IV fluid is already going to this patient, right? Because you started the fluid. Now you mm. want to give the morphine. So morphine, mm. you calculated dose. You need to give 3.5. So what mm. I mean to say, right? This is a injection vial, right? Mm -hmm. This is the injection vial, right? This is ampule. You remove 3.5 and directly give to the intravenous line of the patient or you want to further dilute and then give or how you give. And over what period of time? You immediately give it in two minutes, two seconds, just push, push, direct. Like this is my IV is going. Morphine, I, this is syringe, right? I push shh, IV. How you give? I think so, sir. This is the way. I'm not sure. Fair enough. You did the pain management. What else you want to do? Uh, okay, so we'll re reassess for the pain relief after 30 minutes. And if okay. the pain... So one is IV fluid. Second is mm -hmm. a pain management. Pain third control. Is, third is um, IV antibiotics. Say, for example, this patient, you had given 3.5 milligrams given. After how mm -hmm. many minutes, hours, you will assess that pain is gone or not? So after, after 30 minutes, we have to reassess. After 30 minutes, you reassess. There is no pain control. What else you will do? So we'll, um, in, uh, we'll give the 50% of the starting dose. We'll push more. Of, 50 we'll give more. 50% means 3.5 is 50% is 1.75. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, you give to the patient. After 30 minutes, you give? Mm. Yeah. Yes. After, again, that means you again reassess after 30 minutes, right? There is no pain control. What mm. will you do? So then we will, uh, we will start the infusion. Uh, the per hour infusion of 0 0.05 mg per kg per hour. Uh, 0 0.5 mg per kg per hour. Yes, sir. So, is a 35 kg. 0 0.05. 0 0.5 yes, or 0.05? Yes, sir. Yeah, means 0 0.05, no, basically. Yes, Right, into multiply by 35. Mm. Right? Yes, sir. Right, so that will you give one hourly. IV, when you are giving IV to the patient, what will you monitor on the morphine? So we, uh, sir, we will uh, 
okay we will uh, monitor the signs of um, um, morphine uh, um, over uh, like we'll see the morphine uh, intoxication we'll we'll see the signs of uh, respiratory depression so we have to monitor the uh, the respirations respiratory rate and uh, the drowsiness the, the level of sedation of the patient also mm -hmm. okay okay fine okay so you did i'm coming to you you know uh, one is iv fluid second is pain control so you did pain control what mm -hmm. else you want to do for this patient or uh, discharge right. the patient no sir so we will um, give iv anti uh, before giving iv antibiotics we will uh, we'll take some uh, blood samples for we'll do the investigations which investigation uh, you want to do uh, so we we have to find the the source of infection so we'll uh, we'll take blood culture mm -hmm. and urine analysis urine culture and um, CBC and for if we need transfusion we'll go for uh, blood cross matching and saving mm -hmm. blood cross matching and so that, uh, that you cannot do initially before starting IV fluid and pain control you cannot do blood culture urine culture CBC cross match mm -hmm. yeah so we can we can uh, draw the blood for this also simultaneously but mm -hmm. before starting antibiotics we need to uh, have a good picture of uh, uh, the infection status of the person so that's why uh, I thought for giving the antibiotics I should go for fair enough right so you want to you started IV fluid you had given the morphine now you want to do some investigation to find out the source of infection or some uh, cause of fever right so you mm -hmm. did it. You send all culture, blood, urine, all you did. What else now you want to do? Now we will just give uh, empiric uh, antibiotics, um, ceftriaxone, injection ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone. Yes, sir. Is a which group of drugs? Ceftriaxone is a which group of drugs? Cephalosporin, third generation cephalosporin, sir. Third generation cephalosporin. Okay, so we, it covers which bacteria? Sir, gram negative and gram positive. Can you tell me two to name of gram positive and gram negative bacteria? Mm. Two name of gram positive and two name of gram negative. The Staphylococcus, Streptococcus are gram positive, mm. and the E. coli, mm. um, uh, Salmonella, they are gram negative. Wonderful. So, ceftriaxone, how 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 much dose you will give to the patient? Um, sir, um, it's eighty. Sorry, so it's eighty mm. mg per dose uh, <laughs> given in uh, every twelve hourly. Eighty mg per what? kg per dose IV every twelve hours. Two eight zero zero is the dose. Hmm. Then we'll half the dose and we'll give it. So probably if I count three thousand roughly, so fifteen hundred milligram you will give in the morning and fifteen hundred milligram you give in the evening, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So this is the only single antibiotic you would give empiric or another things you would add with it. Yes, sir. We we can add uh, vancomycin. Okay. Uh, to so, the... so, so you want to give or you don't want to give or am uh, because I'm I'm asking you that is why you want to add. If uh, the patient comes to you, you will give or you will not give. Yes, sir. We will give if the patient is more than five years of age and uh, is in a um is very sick and uh, the fever is also high. So we, there's a, a high chance that he needs a um, good antibiotic cover. So I'll give him. I'll okay, give so you give two antibiotics, ceftriaxone and vancomycin. Yes, sir. Vancomycin, how it going to help to this patient? What coverage he, he give vancomycin this patient? Sir, 
Sir, when comycin is uh, given when there is a risk of um, methicillin resistance uh, uh, strains of uh, Staph aureus, I think, MRSA infections. Okay. Then okay. we add. Okay. And since so the patient is hospitalized and uh, severely um, looks infectious and looks sick, that's why we are giving. So, is there any indication of giving vancomycin in a sickle patient? Or you give all the patients? Um, Fair enough. We'll I, discuss. Yes. So, 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 antibiotic. Fourth is antibiotic. What else you will give to this patient? Or it's all done management? Um, IV fluid, sir. pain control, investigation, antibiotic. It's all done? Mm. Sir, yes, sir. I think the that's the. Mm, uh, what else is the presenting complaint? It's just the fever and the pain, and uh, so we have actually diluted the blood with IV fluids, and we have uh, given it for infection. So, do you need to give something more to this patient? Or it's all done from my side. Um, so right now in acute condition, we will, yeah, we will just give this. Fair enough. Iram. Yes, sir. The scenario is this. The patient, right, who is a 15 yes. years male, weight is 35 kg, severe pain, yes. weakness, Fever of 101, vital shows temperature 101 fever, pulse rate is 120, pain score of 9 by 10, blood pressure is 110 over 70, otherwise no past medical history significant and the rest of the things are okay. Now this patient comes to you in emergency room, how will you manage? Sir, is the patient's... Um... What is the ox uh, oxygen level? Oxygen level is 94%. 94%, okay. So what about the uh, fever, like uh, from a, since how long the fever is? For and what type of the pattern of the fever is? Two days patient is complaining of fever. Earlier it was 100, but since today morning it went up to 101. And now patient in the emergency room. Sir, is there any aggravating or relieving factors? Is there any positive uh, travel history or not? No travel. So, okay. And sir, any associated uh, symptoms? Uh, no, he has a fever, weakness, body ache and severe joint pain in both upper limbs. So, since how long this uh, whole scenario is with him? Like uh, Two days. Uh, is Everything is for two days. Before two days, he was fine. Is there any uh, positive medical history? No, no history of blood pressure, diabetes, or known other disease in family. Not known. Not known mm. family history. Okay. So, sir, uh, ABCD will be given in circulation. Sir, uh, I will go for the ABCD management. Okay, so, this, let me write uh, down. So, Dr. Iram, management. Yes. What you want to do first? Sir, so this patient is stable, right? I mean, you are asking me or you are telling me? <laughs> no, sir, <laughs> Sorry. <I'm> telling <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> as this, uh, as oxy there is no need for the oxygen and uh, there is no need for the ERV management. Okay, so what, and, what do you want to manage? That tell me. Forget now what you don't want to manage. Now how you manage? Sir, uh, I will take, uh, I will maintain the um, IV line and take the uh, few IV samples line. for initial investigations. IV line like, and you send the sample. Fine, fair. I understood. You will send yes, CBC, sir. you send blood culture. Right? Yes, you, sir. You can send other CRP or some infective marker. Probably you will quickly do later on chest X-ray. You send it. Okay, fine. You send the blood yes. sample while getting the IV line. Right? You took mm -hmm. the IV line. Now what will you do? 
you took the IV line, you send the sample, you kept the patient on monitor, monitor is showing temperature is 1101, pulse rate is yeah. 120, SpO2 is 9495, right? Respiratory rate is at 26, right? Uh, right. And uh, ECG on the monitor showing sinus tachycardia. This is what you can see. Probably mm -hmm. you have seen in the emergency room. When any, any sick patient comes, they will put it on monitor, right? Yes, so it sir. is like a television. The monitor is showing you the pulse rate, oxygen, respiratory rate, blah, blah, right? So this looks okay, stable now. So you took IV line. What else you want sir, to do now? Sir, what about the blood pressure? Blood pressure is 110 over 17. 110. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 by 7. Yes. Okay, sir. So, sir, uh, to control the fever, I will give uh, the antibiotic, empirical. Okay, so your first step after taking uh, is antibiotic. Okay, which antibiotic, in which dose and what frequency you will give? Sir, uh, I will give uh, the septraxone one gram. Septraxone one gram. Okay. How frequently? Sir, IVBD. Okay. Fine. Okay. That's all or anything you want to add or it's enough? Uh, sir, I... S Sorry? Mm. Sir... Uh... Because I'm confused, as uh, you are saying, the blood pressure is uh, not so low. I want to give fluids. Okay, so uh, so you had given. So what I understood from this, this patient comes to your emergency room. You took a history. You took IV line. You had given one dose of septriaxone. Now you yes. want to give IV fluid. This yes. is what I'm understanding. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I yeah. also want to give him the pain painkillers to control his pain so you will start iv fluid as well as you want to do the pain control right yes sir right. so what iv fluid you want to give sir crystallites usually uh, the normal slime and uh, ringer lactate crystalloid rl you want to give yes sir Okay. What's the dose of this RL? He is a 15 years boy. Weight is 35 kg. Yes, sir. Weight is 30 kg. So, sir, I will give for the initial, sir, 10 kg, we are giving 100 ml. Then for the next 10 kg, we are giving the 500 one minute, I'm writing the... 10 kg, you give 100 ml. Yes, sir. Okay, for the next then... 10 kg, I am giving the uh, 50 ml. Okay. Then? And uh, for, the ne uh, for the next 10 kg or onward, I will give 20. So, uh, for this, please, 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 Charles. Okay. You tell me here and I'll write down and calculate. So at least Swarath is also see this. Mm -hmm. So first 10 kg, yes, patient has a 35 kg. So can we divide in yes, like sir. 10 kg, then first 10 kg, then another is so 10 to 11 to 20 kg. This is what you mean to say, right? And then more than 20 uh, kg. Is it like this or something else? Any formula? Sir, this can also use and the uh, like the can give the uh, hundred ml per kg. Hundred ml per kg. You want to give now? You don't want to give this. This is maintenance. Sir, we can. Sir, uh, yes, this is the maintenance. Sorry. So you don't want. Sir, to initially. Uh, as, uh, Fine, no problem. So tell me how you want to give. I remove this. Now you, you change your mind. You don't want to give this. Now what do you want to give? Uh, sir, um, 
You did not sir, expect ml this per question, huh? <laughs> sir, 100 ml, 100 ml per kg. 100 ml for... per kg. So 100 ml into 35. Is it 35? Right? Yes, sir. So yes, 3500 sir. ml you want to give to this patient. How will you give? 3500 bolas? No, sir. Then? Sir, initially I can give 20 ml uh, per kg fluid in 10 minutes. Okay, so 20 ml. So 35 into 20 is 700 ml in 10 minutes. Okay, then? Yeah. We then are given, remaining? Yeah, remaining, right? So out of 30... 500 to 700. So 2800 is remaining. Yes, sir. What do you want to do with this remaining now? Um. Sir, I really forgot the formula actually. So write down the homework. This is homework. Until and unless you both are clear in sickle cell, we'll do everyday sickle. Because this question will 100% come in exam. And if you don't answer, it's not a good idea. Because you will see lots of sicklers in Middle East country. Any country you go, not just Oman. I seen, I treated. That is what I'm telling you. Know? Otherwise, why should I do more detailed exercise? I can catch up. Okay, give IV fluid, antibiotic, pain control, khalas. Got it? Mm. Yes. So, both of your homework. Usually, what is the basic principle of starting the IV fluid? What drug, I mean, what agent, NS, RL, when to use what? There are thousands of videos available online. There are lots of literature available on IV fluid. So don't say that you don't get anything, right? Because they will ask these things. Okay, fine. So you, you had given the IV fluid. Come on, little go to the next level. You had given the IV fluid, now pain control. So what injection, what drug, how, what root, dose you want to give? Sir, for uh, severe pain, we can, uh, we will, I will go with the uh, injection morphine. Yeah, this is severe pain, no doctor? Nine out of yes, ten sir. score is a severe one. Yes, no? sir. We have written here score as well. That score mm. is nine out of ten. So it's a very severe, right? Here yes, written, see, nine out of ten. So it's mm -hmm. a severe pain. Yeah. So yes, now sir. what, how you want to control the pain? Sir, I will give morphine. Morphine. So this is the name of the drug morphine. Right. So morphine, yes. how you give oral, IV, subcutaneous? Sir, I will give IV. IV? 0.1 to 0.5 milligram per kg per hour. 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 or 0, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5? ml no, milligram per M kilogram per hour yes sir right am i right yes sir okay so 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 milligram per kilogram per hour iv right morphine yes. is that clear so let's say 1.0 no, no, point no sir initially Sir, initially I will give uh, the dose, uh, stat dose, like the bolus. This is, this is stat IV. dose. This is stat dose. Yes, sir. Right. So, no problem. I'll write down. So, 0 0.1 multiply by kg, that is 35 kg per hour. So, here it comes to 3.5 milligram per hour I will give. Right. I started this. Right. After how many minutes you will monitor this patient sir 30 minutes okay so 30 minutes right there is no much pain control what will you do next sir uh, pain is not totally controlled or it is uh, controlled patient is saying way. i have not much Some... improvement doctor uh, it's okay i have still eight nine of pain after okay. 30 minutes then, sir, I will go with the 50% of the starting dose. It will repeat. No, no, but you started IV, it's IV, or you finish it. It will not a con continuous infusion or just 30 minutes, it's all done. Then you discard the drip. 
you understood my question or not yes sir if you don't understand sir, tell me i'll explain again sir i will give the stat dose of 5 to 10 mg morphine no no again let me understand 0.1 to 0.5 mg per kg per hour iv stat you had given right so this iv stat comes to 3.5 mg right so this is you given like a bolus right or you want to give iv or iv bolus how you sir, want i to want give? to give sir i want to give it as a bolus okay so bolus you have given okay in 10 minutes or 5 minutes or yes. fast you had given patient is fine patient has no yes, side sir. effect but the same time patient is saying i don't have much pain control after 30 minutes now what will you do that is the question then sir i will give uh, 50% of the 3.5 mg start uh, starting dose so that is 1.75 mg so yes. so when pain control is not there you did reduce the dose or increase the dose so so sir, if the, some patient is not improving with 3.5 mg he has no pain control so do you think with the half the dose he has a good pain control no sir but we have to keep in mind that we are giving it the repeated doses so it can develop the uh, respiratory depression also okay fine so 1.75 again bolus this 1.75 is bolus yes sir bolus okay so again you mean to say you want to monitor for 30 minutes and see how the pain control right again there is a no pain control then what will you do sir um, so we can repeat uh, the same dose uh, until the pain is tolerable how how long how mean how how much maximum dose we can give for the morphine the way you explained me how how long i'll cut 1.75 1.75 1.75 1.75 100 mg i think is maximum you, dose this is guess or you know that no sir i read somewhere <laughs> so somewhere is difficult where to find somewhere <laughs> okay so 100 <laughs> mg sir man book by one which Uh, no problem. Man, buy my book, sir. Okay, so send me the link or send me the picture photo. I I am a man with the evidence. Without evidence, I will not believe. Sorry, because this is evidence based <laughs> medicine. Medical science is evidence based medicine. Whatever you speak, you have evidence. Look, sir. They go. Yeah, इधर पे ये guideline में ऐसा लिखा है. So that is evidence. Got it. So yeah. anyway, so hundred milligram. ये आपने maximum You had given. Okay, so now patient has a good control. At the end of twenty-four hours, patient has a good control. What will you do further? How you manage? Sir, pain is settled or not? Not zero. From nine, it comes to two, three. So, sir. Uh... i can discharge patient okay <coughs> sir i will discharge on the oral painkillers like sir uh, ansets codeine or acetaminophen why you can't give the morphine um because uh, you cannot maintain with morphine to this patient sir yes we can but for the mild to moderate uh, the choices uh, like ansets and acetaminophen these are the good choices mm -hmm. it is again so written in the book sir i don't know that morphine is very <laughs> tablet form or not it's in tablet no, this form this is the addiction yes yes what happened so there is a risk of addiction and the child is just 15 years old so we are not going to give uh, morphine for pain to this um, child we can give morphine in in cases of uh, end stage um, advanced cancer patients or those who really need a good pain control and uh, but in this one we are not going to give morphine to the kid to mm. go 
So this, this is one. another another homework at the free time. Don't waste much of the time. Spend ten minutes on exploration. Mm -hmm. How to how to acutely control the pain and how to maintain the pain control. Because if you stop everything, probably this patient may have pain. No? Because of IV morphine, you control the pain. But if you stop everything or if you are not giving good drug, again, patient may present with pain. You understand, right? Because sickle mm. is also there. No? Sickle is in body. You did not cure the sickle. You you handle the emergency. Patient is sickle in, in, in this emergency room. Right? So, anyway. Is there any... Uh, I mean, how you follow this patient? Or follow-up medication? What are the follow-up medication for this patient? Regular follow-up of medication. Regular. Sir, hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea. Before that, there is some drug more important than hydroxyurea, which you need to give lifelong. Folic acid. Folic acid, yes. So you cannot afford to miss folic acid because when there is a hemolysis, right? RBC, for the production of RBC, iron and folic acid is a very, very basic, important raw material to form the blood. So folic acid is supplement lifelong, number one. Number two, as she told, uh, hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea. This hydroxyurea is 10 milligram per kilogram. You can start to the patient and increase up to 30 milligram per kilogram if no response. This drug will help at all no response on the acute crisis. When there is acute crisis, absolutely no response. This patient, I mean, this medicine is only important for the prevention of relapse. Got it? Prevention mm -hmm. of relapse. So how, what it will do? This hydroxyurea, right, which increases the fetal hemoglobin. Fetal. It increases the fetal hemoglobin. And mm -hmm. more fetal hemoglobin increase, sickling process is down. Sickling processes go slow. And that is why it is given as a preventive measure, not for the acute management of pain crisis or fever crisis or vasoocclusive crisis. It is not used at all. This is used for the prevention or recurrence of the attack. Is that clear to you? Yes. Sir. Right. So one is you have told folic acid. Another is hydroxyurea. What else you can give to this patient? So, nemococcal vaccine? Vaccine. So, basically vaccine. So, give me the three name of vaccine. One is pneumococcal. Tell me, Farhad. Mm, yes, sir. One vaccine is pneumococcal. What other two vaccines which recommend to the patient? So, we uh, we give the uh, flu vaccines also. Name, name. Influenza uh, uh, vaccine. I don't know the name. Hemophilus no. influenza type B. Specific name. HIB. Okay. Right? Okay, and third is a meningococcal. Meningococcal. Mm. This three encapsulated organism increases the risk of infection in a, spl in a sickle cell <coughs> disease patient by because in sickle cell, right, this is abdomen. Right side, there is a liver and left side, there is a spleen. But because of chronic inf infarction, spleen is absolutely destroyed. And the term is called as autosplenectomy. Have you heard this word? Autosplenectomy. Yes. Yes, Have sir. you heard, Iram? Yes. So autosplenectomy means because of chronic ischemia, spleen become completely non-functional. He is now not a good lymphoid organ or he will not provide any immunity. Because of chronic insufficiency or lack of the blood supply, spleen get destroyed. And it is called as autosplenectomy, right? And because of no spleen, they are at high risk of developing this three infection. So pneumococcal, meningococcal, and hemophilus influenza type B, right? These three vaccines are available, right? This is also called as a triple valent. Yeah. So all in this, all in vaccines can be given to the patient. Along with that, you can give the calcium as well, little supplementation. 
because they are at the risk of development of chronic osteoporosis, chronic vascular insufficiency, right? So they develop the osteoporosis. So calcium can be supplemented to this patient and follow up the patients every three to six monthly depends on the con clinical condition of the patient, right? Mm -hmm. What are the potential complications of the sickle cell disease, Farhat? Complication and its treatment. Complication of sickle cell disease and yes. what is the treatment of that complication? Tell me one by one. Sir, uh, first complication is... Um... You tell one by one. One tell Farad, one tell Iram. So you both get engaged in discussion. Yes, Farad, tell me first complication. Sir, acute chest syndrome. Acute chest syndrome. What is acute chest syndrome and how you manage? <clears throat> Sir, in acute chest syndrome, there is a uh, uh, pulmonary infiltrates. A uh, patient can present with uh, hemoptysis, uh, severe shortness of breath, and uh, because the microvasculature of the lungs are affected mm -hmm. uh, due to the, the cells, and uh, it can be exacerbated by uh, those infections, respiratory infections, and then sickling can occur, and that can damage the lung parenchyma and uh, which results in acute chest syndrome. Mm -hmm. How do you treat this acute chest syndrome? Sir, uh, the, the acute treatment will be the same as uh, uh, we already discussed that IV fluids, uh, pain management, uh, oxygen, maintenance of oxygen saturation, mm -hmm. and uh, IV antibiotics. Um, and if the patient is still... Uh, there is a um, like there's the oxygen saturation is not maintained then we can go for um, uh, invasive uh, ventilation also and um, so what do you mean by exchange transfusion yes sir exchange have you heard this word yes, have you heard of this word exchange transfusion yes sir i've heard what do you mean by exchange transfusion? Uh, sir, exchange transfusion means that they are actually exchanging the blood of the patient with the normal adult hemoglobin because in sickle cell anemia, they have uh, more of the uh, the sickle, uh, the, um, the, the hemoglobin is actually um, not the adult one. So, so they want to replace... So, so I am the patient. I'm a sickle mm -hmm. patient. You are normal. How do you exchange? Mm -hmm. What will you do? To my blood and your blood? Um, I have not seen, but what I think that it should be, there should be a monitor where there should be uh, one uh, um, IV should go in the... Um, in the Let's like, see what, what's the Eram's concept. Yes, Eram. Yes, sir. Yes. What do you mean by, have you heard first of all this term exchange transfusion? Uh, or never heard? Of? Sir, yes, we actually, we both discussed this like uh, that in the... Uh, Who, in both? the Who both? Who both? Sir, me and Dr. Parat. <laughs> so you have your different team. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I'm yeah, happy. Sir. We actually yes, didn't sir. read it properly. You, know, you, are, the top you, you are in the same boat, so you think that you <laughs> make a good group and discuss. No, I'm happy at least. Good. Get me into that group. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No problem. Just joking. Huh? No, no. It's a good habit. Either I think you both discuss because you are both giving Oman by one. So yes, it's good. Sir. Yeah. So, action transfusion, you and Farad not discuss that. Uh, sir, ask action transfusion what will answer. You did not discuss. <laughs> sir, uh, actually, we are this... saying, uh, discussing that uh, as in the dialysis, mm. we are uh, uh, like um, what we can say that uh, we are um, um, what we are saying that what is the process we are doing in the hemodialysis. So you, you, you both are in Pakistan now. Sir. You both are in Pakistan sir. now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can speak in Urdu, no problem. Just to mm -hmm. explain me how to. I understand. Tell me. Sir, uh, 
सर जैसे हीमोडायलिसिस में हम ब्लड को फिल्टर करते हैं और हाँ। वही ब्लड हम पेशेंट को वापस कर रहे होते हैं ठीक है उसी की बॉडी है तो सर जो ब्लड एक्सचेंज होगा एक्सचेंज uh, ट्रांसफ्यूजन जो है सर उसमें हम uh, एक साइड से उसका ब्लड निकालेंगे और दूसरी साइड से हम उसको नॉर्मल ब्लड जो है वो देंगे समझा नहीं यानी आप उसका ब्लड निकालोगे राइट जी सर एक साइड जी जी हाँ तो जैसे दो इनलेट है भाई इनपुट आउटपुट जैसा राइट तो एक में से आपने ब्लड निकाला वो कुछ मशीन में जाएगा फिल्टर होगा फिर बाकी का ब्लड वापस आ जाएगा नहीं सर फिल्टर नहीं होगा इसमें हाँ। हम हेल्दी ब्लड देंगे इससे हेल्दी ब्लड किसका देंगे सर रेसिपिएंट का डोनर का हाँ डोनर का चलो तो एक आप डोनर का ब्लड भी दोगे तो उसका कोई ब्लड डिस्कार्ड नहीं करोगे जैसे उसका 500 हंड्रेड एम प्रोसेस किया तो 500 आपने निकाल दिया और डोनर का फ्रेश 500 दे दिया ऐसा कर, ऐसा बता रहे हैं थोड़ी मेहनत करनी गप्पे कम लगाने टीवी नहीं देखना है राइट इधर उधर नहीं करना है व्हाट्सअप नहीं चलाना है जब तक ये क्लियर नहीं होगा तब तक मैं ये बीस दिन एक ही लेक्चर लूंगा सिक्कल सेल एवरी डे सिक्कल चार बजे फिक्स समझ गए आप बीस लेक्चर लूंगा खाली सिक्कल के क्योंकि एग्जाम में पूछेंगे और पूछेंगे तो आपको नहीं आएगा तो यू आर फेल समझ लो सिंपल दैट इज वाई मेरे को इसमें कुछ ये करना होता मेरे को ऐसे ही करा देना होता हाँ चलो चलो हो गया ऐसा नहीं करना आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज द क्वालिटी आई एम अ मैन विथ क्वालिटी टू लेक्चर्स थ्री लेक्चर्स इज ओके बट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज आई डोंट नो वॉट दे आस्क इन द एग्जाम ना मान लो वो लोगों ने यही क्वेश्चन पूछ लिया What do you understand by exchange transfusion, Doctor Idam? Tell me. Then what will you do? Tell me. समझे कि नहीं समझो. So don't okay. underestimate them. They have the liberty to ask anything. Believe me, anything. Yes. Sir. And you have. We are discussing for one one hour one topic. You have only five minutes for one question. Fifteen minutes, three questions. You are out. Got it. Mm. so in 5 minutes you have to understand mm. you have to think you have to reply you have to reply properly you are replying as per their requirement then you are passed you understand yes so so don't take it lightly read the exchange transfusion right second yes. complication for us one is acute chest syndrome what are the second you know what is the second complication sir second uh, stroke स्ट्रोक थर्ड सर पेरिपिजम प्रायपिजम प्रायपिजम व्हाट इज प्रायपिजम सर इट इज द इज अ वो सॉरी इरेक्शन ऑफ द पेनिस राइट बट इट इज अ परसिस्टेंट पेनफुल परसिस्टेंट इरेक्शन यस राइट how you treat if some patient comes to you how you treat because we need to know both the things na treatment you also need to know basic i'm not going to ask you in the detail tell me hold the process and operative step i'm not asking you acute coronary uh, this chest syndrome okay fine you give oxygen right you supplement the patient if patient has a fever antibiotic iv fluid exchange transfusion that's it so this is basic you must know right so yeah. prior preserve what will you do or you don't Sir, know if you don't know tell no i don't know no i read that uh, we will give the hydration uh, and uh, the uh, analgesia like we have done before the morphine yeah but what is a specific treatment that is all common treatment see for any sickle cell patient comes to you oxygen iv fluid and if fever antibiotic yes. right and pain management this is common for any patient mm -hmm. This is common for yes, sir, yes. right. But when some patient present with acute chest syndrome, you should have some specific treatment with chest. When you have stroke, you have some specific treatment with stroke. If patient has a priapism, you have some yes. specific treatment with the priapism. Yes, Farhat, any idea? Sir, I will. Sir, I will go for the blood transfusion. So how? Bag the. Blood? 
RBCs. If no response in twenty four hours, then the exchange transfusion. Mm, sir, uh, I think I've read. Uh, and if no response, then the surgery. Surgery, me kya karenge? You would discuss and tell me. Then surgery, nahi hai. So first of all, we will do the uh, we'll uh, we will uh, jo acutely ham sir karte hain, to we draw the blood from the penis. Okay, great. And so then, that is the treatment because um, you if you reduce the sickling in the penile vasculature or dorsal artery of penis or hmm. uh, whatever the vessels, right? So you need to aspirate, right? If you aspirate more, then sickling or sickle cell will reduce, right? Hmm. Uh, so that is the treatment specific and then you do whatever you want to do right so this is third complication fourth stroke is basically vascular crisis or vaso occlusive crisis right if i'm not wrong in general mm -hmm. right what are the complications Anyway. So in the long, uh, sorry, hmm. bones infection. You are saying? Who so is no? saying? No, no. Generally, I am saying that the these patients are more prone to infections. That's why. Yeah, infection is one complication. Okay, yes. infection. What else? Sir, avascular necrosis of uh, femur, okay. like calf Bertie's disease or. The, the, what the will long... you do when patient present with avascular necrosis of femur mm -hmm. in your emergency directly come with the mm -hmm. right or left hip pain, limping, unable mm -hmm. to walk? You diagnosed AVN, femur. What is the treatment? Specific. Forget about these all things. That's there. Specific for the femur. Replacement. Mm -hmm. Hip replacement. There is no replacement. other treatment. You have to replace. Otherwise, mm. it will get fracture. Then it is more complicated. Mm. Right? Yes, sir. Right. So, I think, uh, mm. don't take it otherwise. But you and uh, Iram did not uh, discuss well in the group. You are both group, I mean. Group in sense, you, you have a group, na? you and Iram. Mm. So, you have to mm. do it well once again. Okay, sir. Now, see the literature. Can you see my screen? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see this sickle cell disease or not? Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? So, in these things, right, the sickle cell disease here, so what is a sickle cell disease basically? So, sickle cell disease is a chronic usually well compensated hemolytic anemia why because there is a hemolysis right this is normal rbc i told you yesterday right and this is sickle rbc am i right or wrong yes sir so what happens this is a flexible rbc which can pass through the smallest of the smallest blood vessel but this cannot pass so it can make a clot it can right and this clot can happen in brain that is why you have a stroke this can be in the lung. That is why you have embolism. It could be in the heart. You have thrombosis. It can be in the renal vessel. And it could be in the retinal vessel. And you have sudden blindness. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So, so, so these are the vessels are very tiny. So more tiny vessels, they, they get clogged. They get blocked. So, right? So this is a blood vessel. So, if they block the vessel, blood cannot go further, right? And that can happen in this all organ. And that is why you develop the symptom. So, right, with reticulocyte count, always high. Why? Because more hemolysis, more uh, this uh, reticulocyte count. Retic right? Why this develop? So, this is a right, point, point mutation in 6 beta gene globin. If you remember it's well and good. If not, then it's okay. Don't worry. Nothing much critical or urgent. But you need to know that what is the things. Right? So, uh, symptoms of the sickle. How the sickle usually present? How I can... 
make it up and down to this stage. Hmm. Okay. So this is the overall symptoms of the patient, right? So what the symptoms of sickle cell anemia? So symptoms as we discussed earlier, right? The symptoms are bilirubin gallstone. Why bilirubin gallstone? You need not to understand the mug up. When more hemolysis, more blood will break up, end product of hemoglobin is a bilirubin, right? So bilirubin and too much of bilirubin, bilirubin. develop the gallstone, right? So this patient, many patients, when I see in my OPD as a hematologist, this day when I do sonography, they have a lot of gallstone. Why? Because at, that means they have a lot of hemolysis, right? And chronically elevated bilirubin because more end product of the hemoglobin is a bilirubin and that is indirect bilirubin especially right unconjugated bilirubin so this mm -hmm. is increased increased infection i told you autosplenectomy i use this word autosplenectomy i explained you particularly yeah. encapsulated organism so encapsulated organism i told hemophilus influenza type b pneumococcal and meningococcal is that clear so these three organisms Osteomyelitis, yes. salmonelli. This is a key question. So, what organism affects the most? Uh, I mean, there is a question in DHA OMSB exam, right? Commonest organism causing osteomyelitis in sickle cell patient, salmonella. Retinopathy. I told you because of the blockage of the retinal vessel, blockage of the brain vessel, blockage of the lower limb vessel, right? And avascular necrosis. Mm -hmm. Already, I think you both told avascular necrosis of the head. Is that clear? So these are the common, uh, these symptoms, this is how they present to the clinic or the OPD, right? So you have to keep in mind, right? So how they present, right? And uh, acute painful vaso-occlusive crisis present with severe pain in chest, uh, chest syndrome, back and thigh because of vascular insufficiency and fever. Cause of acute crisis include hypoxia, obviously, dehydration, infection or fever, and cold temperature, it is rare for an adult to present with acute crisis without a clear history of sickle. So very rarely a uh, young patient present with sickle crisis because they usually diagnosed in early age, right? And this is the most common. Children present with the dactylitis. Dactylitis, dactyl means finger and itis is inflammation. So fingers, inflammation <laughs> or in the hand or joint. It's a commonest presentation, inflammation. So in our scenario, what I had given you, 15 years male presented with severe upper limb or joint pain in upper limb or hand. So this is classical, right? And papillary necrosis. Diagnostic test, as I told you yesterday, right? CBC and peripheral smear. So diagnostic testing include peripheral smear. Yes, is the best initial. Why peripheral smear? Because in peripheral, you directly see the ischemia. Uh, sorry, sickle cell sickle. disease. Sickle, right? Normally, it's sickle. a dumbbell shape. You can see directly the sickle. If you want to see the peripheral smear, this is peripheral smear. So see my cursor, right? Let me draw for you to for better understanding yes, for you. Right. So this is normal RBC. Say for example, this is normal RBC. Right? But this is sickle. Can you see the shape like a sickle? Shape like a sickle. This is yes. This is normal. So you can see lots of sickle in the peripheral smear. So it is the most important, easiest and simple and simple test, right? To know the sickling or not, right? So it's a very simple test. So peripheral smear is very, very important as an initial test, right? So peripheral smear and CBC. Why CBC? Because by CBC, you know, okay, fine. What is the hemoglobin? How much is the hemolysis? And, uh, and, uh, CBC will also give you idea about the infection. If the counts are high, you should be suspicious that patient may have infection underlying, right? By high WBC. You know, when any patient present to you with high WBC, how you manage? You think some infection, bacterial, viral, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So infection yes. also you have to keep in mind. So CBC and peripheral smear, never only peripheral smear. So this is peripheral smear in the things, right? Again, the begin treatment, begin treatment of acute crisis, oxygen, C, hydration, analgesia, any fever, then you add the antibiotics. So four things is very important, right? So you can change little order. That's fine. I mean, 
it's written in the book oxygen first doesn't mean oxygen patient has 97 percent don't get panic take iv line monitor the patient i mean put the patient on monitor take the gel core we go draw the blood at the same time start iv fluid try to manage analgesic antibiotic everything goes together it is just a matter of five minutes in my emergency or any emergency sir? right yes yes sir sir i want to ask that for hydration as you are saying that uh, blood pressure is uh, not so low patient is not so hypotensive so we will go must for the hydration in any case yeah why you tell the reason then i will be more happy Hydration, doctor, is extremely important. Extremely, I am saying important. Why? Because when there is a dehydration, patient has a fever, patient has a sickle crisis, when you give the hydration, blood vessel gets dilated, sickle gets diluted, and there is a less chance or less, less pathophysiology of sickle cell disease. So hydration mm -hmm. is number one, rather, I can say. Number one. Okay. So hydration, okay. you start the patient, oxygen, you give patient, give analgesic, antibiotic, whatever the treatment you want to give. Got it, right? So hydration is number one. If they are asking you which you will see, oxygen you first give, hydration you first give, or analgesics. Like this question, if they ask you in exam, then what will you do? Tell the hydration. Mm -hmm. Hydration is okay. number one, which reduces the sickling process. Got it? Analgesic will not reduce sickling process. Oxygen will not yes, reduce sickling process. Sickling process reduced by the hydration because when you give more fluid, the sickle gets diluted. Na? You understand? Right? Hmm. The sequestration yes. or jahan ek jaga ikkatta ho gaye, jada fluid doge, to they get diluted. They get away. Right? Then perfusion will be better. Oxygenation will be better. You got it? So hydration yes. is very important. If, the fee, if there is a fever, or high WBC count, give antibiotic, ceftriaxone, levofloxacin or moxifloxacin. Do not wait for the test result to start antibiotic. So in two cases, you can give the antibiotic without report. One is patient has fever or patient has a high WBC count. You don't need to wait for anything or culture especially. You start the things. And absence of the functional speed, autosplenectomy, I explained, right? Leads to overwhelming infection means it can be a disastrous and manage chronic disease replace folic acid return it is first number one is what folic acid iram am i right folic yes am i right Farad? so replace yes, the sir. folic acid give pneumococcal mm. vaccine because of autosplenectomy you can give all the three give hydroxyurea to prevent recurrence see the word prevent recurrence not for the treatment of acute crisis Prevent mm. recurrence. I told you, prevent recurrence. In acute state, there is no role, right? And increase hydroxyurea dose. Yeah, this is fine. They will not ask the hydroxyurea dose. But you just need to know. Exchange transfusion is used in there if there is a vaso-occlusive crisis presenting with. Can you see this slide? What yes, I can sir. see in my screen, yes or no? Yes, sir. So, exchange transfusion is used if there is a severe vaso-occlusive crisis presenting with acute chest syndrome, which Farhad did not explain to me. You just told oxygen, analgesic, hydration, antibiotic, blah, blah. But you did not mention me about the exchange transfusion and it is a very, very, very important. So, considered simply, if there is a chest, priapism, stroke means brain or eyes or major complication of sickle cell major right mm -hmm. in that case you can use the exchange transfusion in general for pain mm -hmm. crisis you don't need but chest crisis patient may die because of hypoxia patient may die because of acute respiratory distress syndrome right stroke mm -hmm. patient may die so these are the real critical things so here these are the indication where you need to do the exchange transfusion your homework is what is exchange transfusion and how it is done. Okay, sir. Is that clear so far? Yes, sir. Yes. Hopefully, you will not forget now, I guess. <laughs> no, sir. Sure. When when you both have an exam? Don't write. 